It's good to see you. I'm Alfred Perlman. I'm a railroad man, and I'd like to tell you something about our railroad and what we're doing on it. Hear that click of the rails? To a railroader, that's the same music as a hush in the theater to an actor before the footlights come up. The click of the wheels on the rails gets into your blood. People tend to take the railroad pretty much for granted. We in the railroad business probably haven't told the story of the changing conditions in our industry. The railroads have been so much a part of our American history and landscape that most of us don't realize how much they have kept changing. For the railroads have changed with the times, and now they have entered what is perhaps the most dynamic period of our development. That is what this picture is about. I hope you'll enjoy it. for it from the beginning. Power on the move, looking for wilderness to heat up. Its smoke signals said, we're coming west with everything you need to clear a forest, make a homestead, build a town. It said, we're coming east to keep your cities fed, your industries alive and growing. heavy load to carry, carrying the country on its back from the 19th into the 20th century. From the furrow of the rails sprouted our modern industrial world. The idea of masses of goods for masses of people took shape. This skyline, its signature, one continuous moving assembly line, and the rail itself, part of that line. The steel needing iron ore and power, the power needing coal and oil. Every part of the line connected to every other part. Mile after mile of industrial power. assembly line of the American economy and the rail itself part of the line. Like Greenwich time, the freight car load is a standard. It registers the health of the economy. A freight train packages factory loads, tonnages, iron mines, cattle ranges, packages quarries, forests, wheat fields. More than 100,000 freight cars loaded and put on the move in the United States every day. And tomorrow the load will be heavier. To increase efficiency, the railroad calls on modern science and research. Science and research. Key words in industrial progress. The Central uses 2,000 diesel locomotives. Each engine has 3,000 moving parts. Breakdown means time and money lost. Can't we spot trouble before it starts? Less time in the shop means more time on the road. Science and research, hurrying up the repair job. Key 
instrument is the direct reading spectrometer in the research lab of the New York Central Railroad in Cleveland. First, burn a sample of the oil, which minutes before was circulating in an engine. Burn it down to an ash. What's in this ash? Minute particles of elements swept into the oil as it lubricated the moving parts of the locomotive. Submicroscopic bits of piston steel, copper bearing, crankshaft. The ash is inserted in the spectrometer. The spectrometer is the detective, revealing wear and tear on these engine parts. Time for analysis, 47 seconds. By chemical analysis, two months. By checking wear and tear figures on each locomotive against previous readings, trouble is averted before it starts, saving millions of dollars a year. The danger point is spotted. Time presses. Wheat, steel, meat, tomorrow's necessities can't wait. Connect me with Power Control in New York, please. Power Control, this is R.L. Barnes, the Spectrometer Lab in the Research Department in Collinwood. Yes, we're issuing a MV325 on Unit 4200 for immediate bearing inspection. You've got the engine out in Buffalo. Okay, thank you, Mr. Potter. Increase performance, lower the cost. More out of less a problem for scientists. Now, our diesels use 20 million gallons of high-grade fuel per month. Cut the cost of a gallon by just one cent, and you save more than two million dollars a year. Puzzle for the technician. How do you transform an inferior product into a superior one? Find the right working equation. They created an additive, which converted a substandard fuel into a high-grade fuel. More out of less. More speed, more power for the big train. In the Central's atomic laboratory for authorized personnel only, an atomic switch lamp is being tested. Self-powered, it will burn continually for 12 years. Can the traditional rail shape be modified to support heavier loads at greater speeds? Experiment, a dry lubricant for locomotive gears, which could simplify engine maintenance. From roadbed to signal tower, the American Railroad is being refashioned. Electronic freight yard, the frontier yard of the New York Central at Buffalo. One yard that took the place of eight, and more like it being built. arriving in a central post office are rerouted for new destinations, so arriving trains must be reassembled into new trains in freight yards. Frontier Yard can handle 3,000 cars a day and set them moving on their way three times as fast as it used to take. As it moves down an incline called the hump, the freight car is taken over by automatic controls. Its weight and speed are instantaneously calculated on a computer, regulating a system of retarders which slow down the cars.
they move on their assigned tracks to assembling trains at the exact speed necessary for smooth coupling. New railroad in the making. Early bird. Nicknamed for a fleet of New York Central's crack freight trains that speed each day from the Midwest to the East. You are watching the loading of NY4, one of the early birds on the Chicago-New York run. Masses of things for masses of people. Everyday things. Plywood, canned goods, housewares, drugs, paint, newsprint, auto parts, living standard. Auto parts, housewares, neat copper wire, brass fittings, even as they go aboard, every shipment, its description, destination, and car number is registered, fed into teletype machines. At the same instant, the loading is being recorded in bureaus in Cleveland, Detroit, and New York. Throughout its length, the electronic nervous system of the railroad is alert. PM, Blue Island Yard, Chicago. Time to roll. The early bird gets underway. Destination, New York. behind its diesels. Payload 4,000 tons. 8 million pounds of freight on the move. Moving against the industrial skyline which 100 years of train movement helped to make. Night across the Midwest, moving eastward. job a hundred years ago and we'll have it tomorrow carrying the load the train has a single statement to make coming through Indiana night into an Ohio morning, carrying the load. Collinwood, Ohio. 
Ohio. Crew chains. As trainmen have done since the first wood burner ran, the old and new crews exchange greetings, news of families. Good weather and clear track. Some things do not change. as it came when the steam engine ran on this track, comes across Ohio. Over the old right-of-way moves the new train, moving through the old unchanging forms of corn and grapes and wheat growing. The right-of-way ahead made safe and smooth. John Henry with new muscles. There's not a man alive can pull and drive spikes like this. Or raise up rails. Or pack the ballast. Or pull out old ties and put in new ones like that. moved down the road bed, so it's set for that train to roll through. The early bird, moving at 60 miles an hour, shows up on a master control board. On this panel, all train movement on the next 200 miles of road is registered. Remote controls here make two tracks do the work of four handle 85 trains a day, which meet and pass in automatic safety. Here we see the early bird following a local freight. Early bird moving east on track one. Ahead of it and moving east on the same track, the local freight. As the early bird catches up, the dispatcher switches the local freight to track two. freight moves over. The dispatcher lines up track one. And the early bird sweeps on. Throughout its length, the electronic nervous system of the railroad pulsing. Let me have the freight service bureau, please. Service bureau? This is Sutton of Brinkman's. Can you tell me when I can expect a New York Central 64-247? Out of Chicago on the 23rd. Okay, I got it. Hold on a moment, please. Your car left the Frontier Yard at 1.15 p.m. this afternoon. It's due in New York tomorrow morning at 4 a.m. Very well, thank you. Goodbye. Coming through. Destination New York. Every day it is taken for granted. The morning will arrive on time, delivering sunrise, food, fuel, mail, and the standard of living. And more of the same tomorrow. Every day it is taken for granted that what is needed will be on hand. It is taken for granted 
that the train will do its job. The country and the cities grow. The train will help deliver the future, as it has done from the beginning. But that is only half the story. I'd like to tell you the other half myself. But first a question. How would you like to run a business if the government used your tax dollars to build one alongside you, then made it tax-free and turned it over to a competitor, and helped him operate and maintain it? That is the problem of the railroad. Now let me go back a little in railroad history. In the 19th century, the railroads had a virtual monopoly of inland transportation. Regulation of the railroads grew up with that monopoly in mind. They were necessary laws. Indeed, they made sense. Half a century ago, today these laws still control railroad operations. But what happened to our monopoly? Is it in the passenger transportation? Is it in hauling freight? Well, what happened to our monopoly? As all of us know, it has disappeared. But you never know it from the volumes of laws and regulations that still govern our railroad operation. Here is an airport, a modern, up-to-date airport. Who paid for it? Why, like every airport, the taxpayers did. The local government took tax money to build it, or it floated tax-exempt bonds to build it. And it got the federal government to put up more tax money from all of us to help in its construction. Now here is a rail terminal, not quite as up to date. Who paid for that? Why, the railroad did. And it not only paid for it, but pays taxes on top of it. Three million dollars a year, to be exact. Now that makes a difference. Airports, bus terminals, truck terminals, bridges, tunnels, ultra-modern freeways, government-dredged waterways, the rights of way of our competitors, billions of dollars worth of property built and maintained by taxes, yours and ours. The right of way of the New York Central, 10,000 miles of it, our bridges, our freight terminals, our passenger terminals, our research installations, not only built by us, not only maintained by us, but in addition, we pay property taxes of $40 million annually. Taxes that go to support community activities like schools, the fire department, the police department, the highway department, Quite a contrast to our competition, isn't it? And yet the railroads are the lowest true cost producers of mass transportation. The ships in the St. Lawrence Seaway, the trucks on the highway, are not truly producing transportation as inexpensively as the train, when you realize how many of their costs are paid for by the taxpayer. Which brings us back to our question. How would you like to run a business if the government built one alongside you and made it tax-free and then turned it over to a competitor and helped him operate and maintain it? That is the problem of the railroads. Now, despite outdated policies which restrict us, discriminate against us, and would have put any other industry out of business, the railroads have made progress. And you've just seen how much we are doing to make even more progress. But in a competitive free enterprise society, we cannot indefinitely run a business in competition with government-financed, government-supported business. What we have is a lopsided transportation policy on federal and state levels, a policy which is slowly squeezing the life out of our railroads. What do we ask? Well, that's simple. We ask for an up-to-date, fair transportation policy. We ask that all forms of transportation pay their way, as now only the railroads do. 
or failing that, we ask the same tax benefits and the same government support under which other forms of transportation operate today. We are not just discussing a 4% return versus a 6% or 8% return. We're discussing the steady expansion and growth of American industry as a whole. We're discussing your standard of living and comfort. We're discussing your better standard of living and your greater comfort tomorrow. You can't have them without modern and more efficient railroads unless you know the facts and demand a modern transportation policy which gives equal treatment to every form of transportation. Thank you.